the fund. It was not an afterthought. We always uh, communicated and told you all that we have a capacity threshold. And whenever we reach that capacity, we'll restrict the fund to new subscriptions. We will close the fund for new subscriptions. And this capacity is derived by what is the liquidity threshold that we have, which drives the uh, from the overall liquidity of the underlying portfolio holdings, we can arrive what is the maximum threshold capacity that we can go to. Uh, as per the current uh, current liquidity, current portfolio, the fund can uh, has a capacity of close to 5,000 crores. And so whenever we reach that threshold, we will close the fund to new subscription. So we are also mindful of liquidity. We have set liquidity thresholds right in our off documents that we will not buy any fund which has less than two crores of average liquidity over the last 12 months. And we won't at any given point in time, we monitor the portfolio liquidity on a continuous basis. We want our portfolio to be liquid in 66 trading days. Uh, portfolio positioning, of course, we have guardrails around portfolio positioning. Uh, the minimum that we want to buy into any stock is 2% at cost and maximum that we want to buy is 4% uh, at cost. So uh, at any point in time, uh, we have these guardrails that we that allow us to you know uh, take an active call on that stock that we are buying, but at the same time from a risk management standpoint, uh, don't significantly get exposed to any stock. So 2 and 4% is a good balance between the reward that we are trying to reap in that stock versus the risk that we face in that stock. Uh, also, also from a portfolio positioning perspective, uh, we want to restrict our exposure to 5% uh, of the market cap of, the, of any company that we invest into. So we have seen that in the previous table, there are funds that have gone to 7, 8, 9%. But any at any point in time, at, at any any scale of our portfolio, we don't want to exceed that uh, more being more than five percent of the market cap of any company. Uh, investment guardrails I have already spoken about two to four percent on a cost to NAV basis is the investment guardrail that is a good balance between risk and reward that we are trying to bring to the portfolio, and portfolio action rebalancing. Say in case in an instance though we have a liquidity threshold, our portfolio holdings are liquid. But you don't know in a scenario where liquidity really dries up. We haven't seen over the last couple of years. We have seen only liquidity increase because there was there were a lot many flows coming into the small cap space. Uh, but if you look at uh, in case there is a large redemption that we face and we have to prioritize uh, selling or some portion of it is uh, uh, is not saleable to the extent that we want on a pro rata basis, then probably. Uh, we will take a, a call to trim positions with limited upside in, in the first instance. And, and post that, if you are not able to sell the illiquid portion, if any, uh, then we will rebalance the portfolio and achieve the optimal weights of those stocks within one month's time. So we, much of this that, we, that I told you about is not an afterthought. We have put it as a past or a process. Much of it is defined in the offer document as well. Uh, which you will not find with most of the funds, peer funds out there. So uh, there are unique features that we bring to the table when it comes to the small cap space. I think uh, 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 this is a must have uh, in the strategy that you're looking in the small cap space. Uh, liquidity and market cap are very important considerations. Uh, th these allow you to define a fund capacity and to be disciplined about the fund capacity to ensure that a large size of the fund does not become a hindrance to performance or liquidity that the funds are uh, investors are investing into. We think we have strong research capabilities to navigate the large cap, large small cap universe. We will look at uh, from a research perspective what are the themes that uh, we are looking uh, from, uh, which are looking attractive at this point in time, and that will tell you more about the depth of research that we go into. Uh, we emphasis on governance and management quality is paramount for us. We will not buy like you have seen for the large cap uh, funds that we have, the long-term equity value fund or the ESG fund. Governance is very, very important and non-negotiable aspect of our investing. Uh, we, we will stick to that even in the small cap space. And in small cap space, we think it's even more important 
because you may get uh, these these small cap stocks are very fast growing businesses. Uh, they may have great order books, uh, but if the governance and management quality is poor, they may not be able to firstly execute, or uh, you know uh, there could be ways where you know you don't uh, re reap rewards of the profit pool that the business generates because of governance and management quality issues. There could be related party transactions, some siphoning happening from one uh, in, in one shape or other. Uh, so you need to be very uh, clear in terms of the governance and management that you can trust and invest in to only those kind of businesses. Uh, of course, in the small cap space, you have very fast growing businesses. You need to chase those uh, fast growing businesses and ideas, but we need to be prudent about uh, the valuation we end up paying because if the business may be fast growing but may all be in the price if there is no upside to that stock then there is nothing for us as investors to benefit out of and hence uh, we look at those growth ideas for sure but at the same time we are cognizant of the fact in terms of valuations that we end up paying for those businesses and we kind of have a long-term patient approach to capitalize on the compounding that these small cap businesses can bring if you're in the right space